You know, I like to think of of bison as um, freedom. You know, wide open prairie. Um, you know, just moving from one spot to the next. Before the settlement of the plains, bison numbered in the millions, estimates of around 30 to 60 million. So how did that number dwindle to just over 300 bison in a matter of years? Most Americans today believe that the extinction of the bison was due to overhunting. In reality, one of the main causes of the bison's near extinction was the U.S. government. In post-Civil War America, Manifest Destiny gained popularity, more Americans moved westward, and tensions with natives grew. That's when United States Army Generals Philip Sheridan and William Tecumseh Sherman, made famous by their tactics during the Civil War, got involved. Using the strategy known as Total War that they had successfully employed during Sherman's march to the sea to gain control of the Confederates, Sherman and Sheridan planned to gain control of the Native Americans. Eliminating bison was central to this plan. Both generals understood the crucial importance of bison to Native Americans as they used every single part of the bison. General Sherman knew that as long as the Sioux could hunt bison, they would never settle onto reservations. Quoting an October 1868 letter from General Sheridan to General Sherman, Sheridan states, Make them poor by the destruction of their stock and settle them on the lands allotted to them. Mantras are passed around the army, such as every buffalo dead is an Indian gone. The object of the government has been accomplished. An immense number of buffalo hides, all their culinary apparatuses, dried buffalo meat, their sole dependents, captured. The U.S. government also endorsed commercial hunting even so far as to supply ammunition and sponsor hunting parties. After the Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869, bison hunting became a popular sport among the wealthy. Many buffalo hunters shot the bison from their passenger trains, not even collecting their kill, leaving multitudes of dead bison on the plains. By 1872 and the following years, 5,000 bison were killed per day. An article from an 1867 issue of the Mankato Union reports of a nearby buffalo hunt. It is reported that there is a large buffalo hunt. A large number of distinguished congressmen invited guests of Dr. Burley, the popular delegate in Congress from Dakota. They intend to spend several months chasing the buffalo over the plains. One of the most famous civilian hunters of the time period was William Buffalo Bill Cody. He claimed that in one 18-month stretch, he killed 4,280 bison. 1872 was the same year that Yellowstone National Park was founded. In the following years, railroad lines would ship millions of pounds of bones. Hides sold for $1.25. Products included hats, shoes, and coats. By 1876, three to four million bison on the Southern Plains were dead. By 1884, just eight years later, 325 bison were left, including the Yellowstone herd. People slowly began to realize that the destruction had to stop. Protected herds began to appear, but they were few and far between. In 1889, the total bison population had risen to 1,000. In 1905, the American Bison Society was founded by Ernest Harold Baines with President William T. Hornaday, an honorary president, Teddy Roosevelt. The society gifted a herd of 12 bison to Wichita National Forest Reserve, the first gift of bison to establish government herds. In 1908, the National Bison Range was established. Up until 1935, the American Bison Society was busy gifting and reestablishing bison to federal herds, but leaders of the society, feeling that they had done their job, voted the society out of existence. That leads us to today and the Miniopa herd, a small herd of 20 bison from Blue Mound State Park. I sat down with Todd Daly to talk about the bison's long-term impact here in southern Minnesota. I am the assistant unit supervisor here at Miniopa. Okay. And what's really the main purpose of having this herd here at Miniopa? Um, the main purpose of this herd uh, is just restoring that genetic purity for, for American bison. So Miniopa was considered for uh, 
spot to reintroduce bison again. Okay. Um, and really, it was based solely on visibility. Um, we thought Minioka would be a perfect spot with a drive-through range. Um, we would be able to tell the story of bison a mm -hmm. lot better than we would if we just had a 500-acre prairie somewhere with bison out in the middle of it, um, unable for the public to see. Well, biogenetically pure, what do you mean? They are not mixed with any other animals. They are pure bison, okay. which means um, they have no cattle genes whatsoever. Okay. So a lot of the bison that are, are put out there for meat production will be bred with cattle. Are you keeping a herd genetic, uh, genetically diverse? Um, well, one of the big things is securing bulls from other herds. We have a pie chart that the Minnesota Zoo has developed um, and it spells out exactly what our genetic diversity is within our herd. And so My next question is, how would the environment change um, if the bison were to leave the area again? What happened when they did leave? Um, well, what happened when they left was we seen this massive influx of invasive species come up. We lost a lot of our native prairie lands that used to be kind of in this area. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of take a look at it in that respect. Um, a lot of the oak savanna that used to be around here is now struggling to survive. Mm -hmm. um, had bison been here, um, you know, our prairie probably would be a pristine prairie. Has uh, the environment seen a lot of changes since the bison were reintroduced? Has the prairie, um, has there been like less invasive plants? Um, I think, yes, I think the bison are doing what they're supposed to be doing out there. Okay. Um, we've also stepped up our resource management program within the park here. Um, we've been doing a lot more uh, treatment of invasive species. Um, we've been opening up those areas that have been kind of overgrown for many, many years, allowing new plant development. The bison was a story of tragedy for the Native Americans, but this majestic creature is triumphantly continuing its story in history, always strong and unwilling to give up, a trait that all Americans can share with the bison. On May 9th, 2016, President Barack Obama signed the National Bison Legacy Act, making the bison America's national mammal. Now, every first Saturday in November is known as National Bison Day.